My name is Professor Ian Bond, and I am the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you all here today. We're here together in a virtual space, when of course we expected to be welcoming you in person at a graduation ceremony that would have been taking place this month. Instead, we're here online to take this opportunity to mark and celebrate the completion of your time with us. Uh, as you have no doubt already heard, this is not a replacement for graduation. You will all be invited back to celebrate your awards when we're able to do this safely. However, we do hope that today at least gives you a chance to reflect on your time living and, in, uh, and studying at the university, uh, and, and also the time in the city, and a chance to sort of come together uh, think and reflect uh, and look to the future. So some 5,000 of our students, both undergraduate and postgraduate, are finishing their studies in Bristol this summer. Uh, today is the turn of the Faculty of Engineering to celebrate those who have worked extremely hard over the last few years across the departments of computer science, electrical and electronic engineering, engineering mathematics, civil engineering, aerospace engineering and mechanical engineering. A big warm welcome to all of you who've been able to join us. So to mark this celebration in a fitting way, we've arranged some guest speakers uh, to whom I would hope you would join with me in offering a warm welcome. We have Professor Paddy Island, the Pro Vice Chancellor for Research and Enterprise. We have Rushab Shah, a final year mechanical engineering student and incoming Bristol SU Sports and Student Development Officer. And we have Jenny Griffiths, an award-winning technology entrepreneur and a computer vision engineer, and one of our alumni who graduated in 2009 with an MEng in computer science. So welcome to you all. Finally, you're not alone. We are joined by some of the faculty staff and many familiar faces that you may recognize. Before we get started with the proceedings, uh, a few brief housekeeping notes and what to expect over the next hour. You will see that the chat function is open for you to use, and please do use it. But please use it responsibly, and remember that this is a celebration event. You will have seen some pre-submitted messages for staff, supporters, and your peers rolling before we started. These will show again at the end of the event. You can continue to submit these throughout and the link will be posted in the chat shortly. You will also see that we have a, a Q&A button where you can submit questions to our guest speaker, Jenny, during the event, and we'll do that shortly. The event will be recorded so that those who were unable to join us live can look back and take part. And if you do want to use any social media during the event, please use hashtag Bristol Class of 2020. We're also delighted to have BSL interpreters Catherine and Anna with us today. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Paddy Island, the Pro Vice Chancellor of Research and Enterprise, to give his address. Over to you, Paddy. Thank you, and thanks very much. Good morning, everyone, and good morning especially to the class of 2020. And congratulations to all members of that class on reaching the end of their studies at Bristol. Uh, it's a seminal moment for you and a, a proud moment for us. And as Ian has said, we come together today to celebrate this moment, to reflect a little on your time at Bristol and to share a few words of advice as you embark on the next stage of your journey. Uh, before I do that, however, let me reiterate Ian's point that today's proceedings are most definitely not intended to be a substitute for an in-person graduation ceremony. You deserve the opportunity to experience this important rite of passage in the traditional way, like so many Bristol graduates before you. And we hope to provide you with an opportunity to do this as soon as it is safe and practical to do so. Now, I realize that not all of you have yet received your awards, but you can, I think, nevertheless be proud of completing your studies. I know from personal experience many years ago that fi the final year of a degree program can be nerve wracking at the best of times, all those hours spent in lecture halls, in seminars and practicals, all those hours in the library or in a, a quiet study spot somewhere. It's your hard work and determination that has brought you to this point. Alas, as a result of COVID, your final few months at the university have not been what any of us would have wished for. Nothing about the last few months has been normal. 
Not only, not only were your studies disrupted, many of you have been unable to say goodbye to your friends and lecturers in person, or to celebrate the end of your exams, or to say farewell to the wonderful city of Bristol that has been your home for the past few years. We at Bristol feel very proud of what you and all our students have achieved in recent months in the face of real adversity. And you should feel proud too. Despite disruption to nearly every aspect of daily life, and the associated emotional turmoil of the lockdown period, you've continued to work diligi diligently in pursuit of the knowledge and skills needed to obtain your Bristol degree. And as we look ahead to what's likely to be an uncertain future, that degree will hold you in good stead. It's a badge of excellence recognized around the world as a hallmark of academic and intellectual achievement. And more than this, your success during this difficult period is testament to the personal resilience you have shown, to your ability to adapt and change, invaluable personal attributes for navigating life's trials and tribulations, and qualities highly prized by employers. And it's not just your academic response to recent events that's to be com commended. Bristol students have offered support to those around them, have cared for and shown com compassion towards others, qualities which it's to be hoped will post-COVID be more valued in the future than they have perhaps in the past. At the height of a public health crisis, many of you have stood tall and lived out Bristol's values of responsibility and respect. Many of you have supported food banks, developed online education resources, fundraised for good causes, supported vulnerable members of our community and local charities dealing with the impact of the pandemic. This support has not only been greatly appreciated by our neighboring communities, it has been greatly appreciated by your university. You have been a credit to our city and to our community. Now the university's motto is learning promotes one's innate power, vim promovet in situm. And as you come to the end of your studies, I hope that your time at Bristol has helped to unlock your own innate power and equipped you with the skills and the knowledge you need to become leaders in your chosen fields. Now, of course, many of you won't necessarily have chosen that field yet. And that may turn out to be just as well, because even before the pandemic, we were in a period of turbulence and change. The, the pandemic has amplified this. And in such times, new opportunities often present themselves. Choices will open up. Now, sometimes the choice that you will uh, you should make will be clear and straightforward and won't require much consideration. But you're likely to face other choices that are much less clear, much more difficult to assess. So my advice is think carefully about the path you want to take. Where could your talents and interests take you in the future? If the path that you should take isn't immediately, immediately clear, please don't worry. It's perfectly normal to reach this juncture in your life and to not know quite what to do or where to go next. That was certainly my experience and it's been the experience of my own children. It can take time for young people to decide what they want to do and time for opportunities to emerge. The important thing is to be ready and able to seize those opportunities when they present themselves to you. Have confidence in your abilities and in your intuitions. They've got you this far and I've no doubt they will continue to serve you well. Don't hesitate to seek advice. We all draw on others for support in life. Sometimes our supporters can see the choices before us more clearly than we can ourselves. Speak with them, get their point of view, let their perspective inform your next steps. Let me reiterate that today is not a goodbye from the University of Bristol. It's most definitely an au revoir. I'll see you again soon. Remember that when you receive your awards, you enter our alumni community of over 165,000 spread across the world. And remember also that our career service is still here for you, should you need it, for up to three years after you finish your course, wherever you are in the world. This includes career guidance, feedback on job, app job applications, and interview practice. Just log on to My Career on the Career Service website if you would like to speak to one of our careers advisors. Before I make way for our distinguished speakers, all that remains for me to say 
is that I very much look forward to welcoming you, welcoming you back to Bristol in person for a graduation ceremony in the future. In the meantime, as lockdown restrictions continue to ease, at least here in England, I hope you're able to enjoy the remaining summer, summer months and to savour this moment of achievement. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Ireland. So as, as Paddy says and made reference to, we're mindful that we, we cannot fully understand what it's like to be finish, finishing your studies under these very difficult circumstances. So we are really pleased to have one of your fellow final year students join today who will give some reflection on behalf of you all. Um, your university career will have been hard work, filled with academic achievement, but it will also have been about friendship and relationships that you've made along the way. So I'm now going to hand over to Rushab, who's going to give his personal take on his experience at Bristol. Rushab. Good morning, everyone. Professors, students, parents, siblings, uncles, aunties, and friends. Thank you, Professor Ian Bond, for the lovely introduction. Welcome, one and all, to this auspicious event, marked to celebrate your respective efforts and to congratulate each of you for making it to the end of your degrees. I am an international student from Kenya, and I just finished four years of mechanical engineering. Just a little fun fact, Hakuna Matata, the famous phrase from Lion King, is Swahili, the language spoken in Kenya. And it does mean no worries. So when you meet new people and need to impress them with a fun fact, here you go. I could not have asked for a better university experience. Throughout my time at Bristol, I have met incredible people, made some fun memories, and had a great opportunity to grow and develop as a person. I still remember the day I left Kenya to come to the UK, and despite being in an entirely new environment, I felt comfortable. My flatmates were lovely, course mates were as lost as I was, and I really did feel that I was in a great university and city. I think we can all agree that these are indeed very strange times. I would never have imagined having a celebratory ceremony online over Zoom. In fact, I don't think anyone knew what Zoom, what Zoom was before lockdown. Ordinarily, we would have all been walking out of Coombe Dingle from our final exam, heading straight to the pub and feeling a huge weight being lifted off our shoulders. However, it has obviously been a very strange end to the academic year. The university shut as everyone was collecting their last pieces of data for their research projects. All teaching went online, exams went online, and we had to adapt to this entire new style of teaching and assessment. The last few years has not been a walk in the park for any of us. There have been tears, there have been late nights in the libraries, there have been fluids mechanics exams that we thought we could never get through, but here we are, the class of 2020. Getting through any sort of degree is a huge accomplishment, and I believe it is safe to say that there are unsung heroes out there who made our lives just a tad bit easier throughout our time at university. It could have been in the form of bringing food from home to freeze for weeks, to receiving a cheeky 20 pound bursary from a family member or friend, or even just a late night phone call to an old friend. To those unsung heroes, we all want to say a massive thank you. You know who you are and we really do appreciate you. As engineering students, I believe there are a lot of small things that has truly made Bristol a unique and special place for all of us. From getting lost in the Queen's building as a fresher and maybe still as a graduate who has spent three or more years working in it, to spending hours working on coursework in the computer rooms, to sitting in the physics building during EngMaths 1 and listening to Alan Chapney play the piano and talk about politics. At Bristol, we have been blessed with incredible facilities, the opportunity to study with some of the smartest students in the country, professors that love what they do, and a city that will always have a special place in all our hearts. The diversity, the culture, the harborside, the triangle nights out with cheesy chips from Donovan, are all just small aspects that have made university life that much more enjoyable. For the class of 2020, my life advice for you is simple. You are now qualified. You now have control to write the pages in your book of life. Don't waste this opportunity. Try new things, do things you genuinely love. And if you don't like something, then find something else. I want to share a famous quote from Alan Watts with you. The meaning of life is just to be alive. It is so plain and so obvious and so simple. And yet everybody rushes around in a great panic as if it were necessary to achieve something beyond themselves. Life is too short to be chasing dreams that aren't yours. Make sure you keep time aside for your friends and family, for hobbies that you love, and most importantly, for yourself. 
Don't burn yourself out. Don't be too hard on yourself. And if you are having a bad day, just remember that there is no way a quick pint or a short walk with a friend will not improve your mood. We are the class of 2020. We got through things in the middle of a global pandemic. We are pretty hardcore if you ask me. I just want to finish the speech off by saying a massive thank you to everyone that has turned up to the ceremony today. Thank you for listening to me and thank you for being a part of this roller coaster of a journey called student life. I wish you all the best of luck with what's to come in your lives. And just remember, if you can get through a fluids exam, you can do anything you want in life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rushab. Some really inspirational thoughts there. So we know, or we hope, that your time at University of Bristol has been a rich and varied one. Uh, the academic staff that have taught you, the professional services staff that have supported you, and indeed the wider city and its people have all shaped your experience with us. In fact, there are many people who could not be at this event today who uh, would like to introduce, uh, uh, who are not at this event today, who would like to introduce, uh, sorry, there are many people at this event who are not able to attend this event today and would like to show a short film which captures the essence of what being at Bristol is all about. 2020 is a year we'll never forget for many very challenging reasons. Very strange time. You've done incredibly well to get through. But for all of you, it's a year of celebration. The year when your hard work, your commitment, your dedication to your studies comes to fruition. We know that 2020 has been an extraordinary year for everyone. But take a look at this year as being an opportunity to connect back with the people who've made your time at Bristol special and the city which made all that come together. What I loved most about my course was every day was not the same and the challenges made me a stronger person. I found it incredibly invigorating listening to other students' projects, what they were really excited about. Studying in Bristol with many people from different part of the world. And meet with my friends. Even after the lockdown, I still maintain in contact with them online. The diverse experiences in Bristol is my most valuable part of my last year. Getting involved in practical stuff and also getting used to the technology that I have now used before. Being at Bristol, I've been given the confidence to grab the opportunities that have been presented with me. Learning how to be independent and live alone in a different country. My favourite memory of being in Bristol this year has been being involved in the Students' Union. I think that students' voice is really important. There's a lot to be said for Bristol and I know that throughout your course you have experienced the city in all its greatness. My favourite places in Bristol would be the Royal Fort Gardens in the University, Clifton Village and St Nicholas Market. Clifton Suspension Bridge, Harbour Side Lee Docks, Castle Park, College Green, Cathedral, you name it and you have it. Loads of independent cinemas and shops. And I love the music scene. The nightlife, it is amazing here. That's one of the most important things I'm going to miss. Bristol is the twin city of my hometown, Guangzhou. And I'm a crazy fan of Shaun the Sheep the Animation. Bristol Harbour side, where I'm standing right now. I love being near to the water. Going to the park, going to the pub, or studying together. Wills Memorial. First time I went into the Wills Memorial building, I felt like if I was in a Harry Potter movie. My favorite place in Bristol and in the university would be Student Union Living Room. I do love the Queen's building as well. It's pretty cliche for an engineer, but I love the Queen's building. <laughs> The creative spirit, like you can see the graffiti here and also the community spirit that everyone is here together to support each other. Everything is beautiful about this city and I'm going to miss this city as well as the university. We've had a pretty bizarre end to our degrees so I think if we can support ourselves through this then we're going to have friends for life. Class of 2020, you have finished your degree in a global pandemic. That's amazing. Despite no one really knowing what's next in the world, know that you've grown as people, even if it doesn't feel that way just yet, and face challenges that you've overcome to be where you are today. 
You will have worked hard to get your degree, so very well done. Be proud of what you have achieved. There's also a truth that it's in the middle of huge challenge that we really find out who we are. We know that students have really stepped up in volunteers and, and helped the city to cope and that's been incredibly welcome. Congratulations class of 2020. And good luck for the future. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Well done guys. Congratulations all the students of 2020 and hopefully we'll see you again in the future. Thank you very much guys, I appreciate all the love, alright, and I'll see you again soon. There's a little blow for you. Right. <laughs> Congratulations class of 2020, we did it. So thank you for choosing Bristol and really, really well done and good luck for the future. You'll know from your time at Bristol how special this city is. And I speak as someone who graduated, moved away and came back. Why? Well, a little part of Bristol stays with you and we'd be delighted to see you back in the city at some future point. Keep us in your hearts, keep us in your minds, be an ambassador for us on the global stage. On behalf of everyone at the university, I wish you all the very best for the future and look forward to welcoming you back to Bristol when we can for our traditional graduation ceremonies. So congratulations again and well done. Hey, I'm James Blunt. A huge congratulations. You have just finished the best years of your life. And it's all downhill from here. So it's now time for us to hear from our special speaker, Jenny Griffiths. Jenny is an award-winning technology entrepreneur and computer vision engineer. She founded her company, Snap Vision, in 2011, which was the first in the world to offer visual search for fashion retailers and publishers across both mobile and web. Being so early in the journey of the development and commercialization of today's AI, AI market, Jenny is a thought leader, not only in AI and computer vision, but also in how to innovate and how to drive markets into adopting new innovations. Her work has led to her winning a number of awards from the Royal Academy of Engineering Silver Medal for personal contributions to UK engineering, to being awarded an MBE for services to innovation at the age of just 27. This year, she was named as one of the Forbes magazine's top 50 women in tech in the world. Jenny, thank you for joining us today. And I'd like to invite you to give your address to our departing cohort of engineers. Um, so thank you very much um, for the introduction, um, Ian. And uh, it's lovely to meet, meet you all, um, albeit virtually. And it's such an honor to be here today. So a huge congratulations on all of your achievements. And thank you for having me um, here as part of your, your special celebration day today. That film just brought back a hell of a lot of memories and Rashab, it's great to know that the chips from uh, Jason Donovan are, are still as good as they always were. So I'll start off today by telling you a bit about what I do. So I founded and ran an AI company called Snap Vision and we build computer vision technologies for retailers, publishers, um, publishers and technology companies, centering around object recognition and basically computing similarity metrics between images, mainly in the fashion industry, but also in other in industries such as defense and brand protection. So it's a challenging, but it's a really rewarding career. Um, and like Ian mentioned, we were the first company in the world to do cross-platform visual search in the fashion industry way back in 2011. Um, and we're continuing to push the boundaries today. That's what kind of gets me excited and gets me out of bed in the morning. My job ranges from the day-to-day -day running of the company, um, from raising capital to business development, to the part of the job that I still really love, which is managing and growing the engineering team and still getting stuck in on the computer vision side of things. So I guess a bit about how I got here. Um, I was a Bristol University engineering student between 2005 and 2009, studying computer science. And I will always look back at that time in my life as intensely challenging, but intensely fulfilling. And certainly some of the best years where I learned some amazing things and made friends with people over a decade later, we still reminisce, reminisce about lunchtime in the MVB in Queens. And we still resent our walking across the downs and with all of that shopping from Sainsbury's. Um, and at the end of my four years of study, I had a head full of knowledge. I had fingers which automatically type function declarations whenever I got within a few meters of the keyboard. Um, but I also had a huge ambition to, to try and change the world. However, worth mentioning, I also had a huge amount of fear and trepidation. So 2009, um, I was leaving university during a huge financial crisis, um, the worst recession the world has seen is in decades. 
um, not dissimilar to now. And I was reading um, in the news every day that it was the worst possible time to get a job, that unemployment was on the rise. And also it was my fault. I'd never be able to afford a house because I was eating too many avocados, much like people my age. Um, I don't have to describe to you how this all feels. But this is where, in that kind of adversity, I began to see the tools that Bristol had given me beyond my ability to, to code and to divide algorithms. So with a strong education and a lot of legwork, um, I got myself three career options when I left university. So I had a job offer as a project manager at a large engineering company. Um, I had an option to stay on and carry on studying at university. And I'd also won the university's enterprise competition for the technology I created as part of my thesis, which is the, the basis of SNAP today. So graduating in the climate that I did, I took the safe option of the job. Um, and I was soon working in Somerset as a program manager. So I was working on multi-million pound communication projects. Um, and soon after about a year, I was heading up a portfolio of around 15 engineering projects. Um, and to be honest, it was a really fulfilling career. Um, but And within a few months, I'd gone from being a fairly laid back final year students, if any of my uh, old professors are on here, they know that, um, to managing a team of seasoned engineers. Um, and although it was a really fulfilling job, I always had that nagging thought at the back of my mind that I should have started that business. Um, so I began to reserve um, day times for my nine to five job and evenings and weekends for where I was building my startup. So fast forward a few years to 2012, I took that ultimately for faith. I took a long hard look in the mirror and I realized I was living for my evenings and weekends, not in the traditional fun way, but because I was working on my true passion. So I decided to quit my day job. I moved back in with my parents who are incredibly tolerant and I earned absolutely nothing um, eating cocoa pops for lunch most days. So to be honest, it was like being back at university. And this is where my Bristol background really kicked in. And I always think the Bristol engineering students are some of the most resilient and experimental people out there. Being a tech entrepreneur is all about this. So you're learning on the job, you're throwing yourself into the abyss and you're accepting failure on an almost daily basis. And I hadn't realized at the time how much my degree prepared me for this. I was used to working on complex problems involving prototype solutions, and working on them for days and just throwing them away. I was used to learning completely new concepts in almost real time, and frankly, just throwing caution to the wind when the deadline was looming and buckling down on a theory until it worked. And that's basically the skill set you need to start a business. So within a few years of running Stamp Vision, I'd achieved far more than I ever dreamed of. I started my business because I didn't want to look back and wonder what if I know that someone's going to do this, I'd, I'd love it to be me. But throughout the journey so far, um, I like was mentioned, I've received an MBE, I won the Royal Academy of Engineering's Medal for UK Services to Engineering, which was my kind of proudest moment. Um, but the bit that people don't talk about was I've also survived far more than I ever thought possible. No one can quite prepare you for how hard it is to start and scale a business. People will tell you, but it doesn't quite hit. Um, and to be honest, I've carried on building those skills that Bristol was responsible for laying the foundations for. I'm only part of the way through my journey, so I'm looking forward, um, like you guys, to seeing what's to come. So in that kind of explanation, I've touched on a few attributes that make Bristol engineering, engineering students particularly kind of Bristoly and awesome. And I want to share them with you properly. Um, strangely, I noticed the other week that most of my engineering team at SNAP are engineering graduates from Bristol. Um, not through any overt bias, I hope, um, but just because Bristol engineers come out of university incredibly well-rounded and with so many core values ingrained in them, which makes them stand out for the rest. And you probably don't realise that as of yet. So first up, um, you're used to independent thinking. Bristol's courses are tough. I don't think we should sugarcoat that. Um, sometimes in the moment, you might get a bit envious of your friends from school who went to other universities where they had all those one-to-one -one tutorials. You might be jealous of your flatmate who only has a four hours of, of lectures a week. I'm still a bit bitter about that one. Um, but what it means is that you emerge from university with an amazing ability to dig deep into a problem that hasn't been ex explored at all at all. Um, so you can take that academic leap into the abyss with no backup, no prior art, and Bristol has prepared you for all of that going forward. You're not afraid of a challenge. You're used to tough deadlines, to huge academic undertakings, and even challenging your peers in group work, which is harder than it seems. As a Bristol student, you've experienced such challenging work on a regular basis that you may actually seek it out like I did during evening and weekends, or at least I hope that's normal. And then the next one is a bit of a strange one, but you've come out of university commercially aware and you haven't been educated in a bubble. So Bristol University as an educational institution, but also Bristol as a city, 
makes their uh, engineering graduates a bit more real. So we've had the absolute privilege of growing as people in a beautiful, wonderful, vibrant, active city that lets you understand perspective, learn what real values are, and more importantly, find your real values. And this is so important as it will set you apart when you're defining your next moves. And there's a reason that I think this is so important. So I believe that values, personal values and societal values are such a huge part of being a good engineer. The world that we're living in right now is facing huge challenges from global pandemics to a recession to population rises to climate change. An engineer is at the heart of the solutions to all of these problems. If you read the news too much or get sucked into Twitter, like I do, it's easy to feel down about the world right now. But you can actually flip that on its head. So as an engineering graduate, you've truly got the power to change the world around you. If you're worried about climate change, you can get stuck into designing plastic-free packaging, managing global supply chains to improve fuel efficiency, or working on the world's energy supplies. If this pandemic's galvanized you into investigating health tech, you could be designing cutting edge ventilators, designing the software to help with the secure tracking and tracing, which we really need to do, or scenario modeling to improve the future. So honestly, I think that as an engineer, you've got the largest opportunity out of any of the degrees out there to make a dent on the world. The problem that I've personally decided to focus on, um, so I had the belief over a decade ago that the way the world searches is fundamentally broken. It's just not fit for purpose nowadays. We're all walk walking around um, with these new devices, tiny devices, and an old way of searching. And to be frank, the only thing we've fundamentally changed for consumers is we've shrunk the size of the keyboard. Um, and that's why I've decided to try and change it. Um, but I'm already looking ahead to those next challenges um, that you guys will be looking at now, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So a bit of advice. Um, like the time I graduated in 2009, um, I know that the class of 2020, it must feel overwhelming to be emerging into the unknown. And obviously my experience doesn't come close to matching yours. But my advice for you to be, um, sorry, my advice to you would be um, to try and see the opportunities in the changing times that we're going through. It's easy to feel overwhelmed, but we're living in an era where we can make a lasting impact for generations for good on global communities and on the planet. And that's actually really exciting. Don't be afraid to take career risks. Um, I say this personally, it took me over two years to muster the courage to start the business that I, I know and love today. Um, and I started thinking about it at university. So trust yourself, trust, trust your judgment, and be good at calculated risk. You, you're engineers, you'll be very good at that. Cherish the friends you've made here. Sounds cheesy. Um, whether they're on your course, through societies or through halls, you've bonded over joint experiences and they'll last a lifetime. And I'm always so grateful to kind of chat with my friends from uni and those bonds will, they really will last a lifetime. Keep connected to Bristol. Um, so I live in London now, but I'm, I'm regularly back at Bristol and you're going to be part of a global community of awesome alumni who will connect you to the best people, the best jobs, incredible opportunities. So make sure you stay connected to what's going on in Bristol and don't feel afraid to leverage Bristol's network and also give back to it. It's a really great thing. The more you put in, the more you can get back and it, it's really rewarding. And to sound really cheesy, um, but enjoy the moment today. I know it's easy to be swept away in what's next or worry about the future, but just remember to breathe. So when you start a company, you're always told to celebrate your successes and feel the wins. I'm absolutely dreadful at that personally, so uh, I need to learn from my own advice. But today you're all done incredibly well and you've all well and truly earned the right to do that. So congratulations on everything that you've achieved. I hope you have that kind of pause and that moment of pride. And I really can't wait to hear what you will do next. So thank you very much for having me here today. I'm just joining your celebrations and I'm looking forward to any of your questions. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, if you're happy to take a few questions, we have a few. Um, so uh, just following on from your, your conversation really there, what, what prompted you to take that step to develop your own product? And, and how did you overcome that fear that you mentioned about making that big leap? Yeah, um, so I think the first thing to realize when you start a company is the fear is real pretty much every day. Um, so you've got that initial kind of leap, but you're always trying to, uh, to work out what the next fire is you need to put out or, or the next big thing that you want to do. But I think the catalyst for me was the company that I was working for was, um, I was working at a defense company um, and they were beginning to make cuts. And I wasn't cut, but I just kind of thought, hang on a minute, I'm, I love my job, I love the people that I work with, but there's a reason that I'm going home every night and I'm working. 
And I think just that kind of sitting, taking a step back, looking at my career, um, a bit like um, Professor Aaron said at the beginning, is you don't quite know exactly what it is you want to do after you graduate. And that's completely fair as a feeling. And I kind of knuckled down going, right, I've, I've picked my direction, I should stick to it. And it just kind of took that moment to take a step back and going, well, why am I working my evenings? Why am I working the weekends? And uh, kind of checking in with myself a bit and, and realizing that um, my job, although it was fun, wasn't what I really wanted to be doing. Thank you. Um, a technical question here, which, which you may or may not be able to answer is, is how, it, how is Snap Fashion different from Google reverse image search? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so Google reverse image search and uh, any of the, the um, search facilities office, um, offered by the big companies is uh, they've taken an approach to developing search where they're looking at the whole world. So for Google, they're looking at license plates, um, I know front of restaurants, OCR, um, wine bottles. So the approach they've taken to machine learning is incredibly kind of generalist. Um, and I say this without slamming their technology at all, they're Google, it's amazing. Um, but it means that the level of information you can get on images without um, associated metadata is quite kind of high level. So you can put an image in and it can say it's a cat, it's a dress, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes to how brands leverage that information, it doesn't have that amount of detail to stop it from being a kind of so what experience. So it's like you're looking at an image, it's got a dress in it, it's being worn by a woman. So what, what does that do for a brand? So where we focused as a company is getting actionable information for retailers. So you can say, yes, it's a dress. We know that it's a V-neck, um, it goes into the waist, it's got an A-line skirt, da, 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 da. That can then be leveraged in different ways for whether it's out of stock products, um, visual similarity. So it's all the computer vision solutions out there. It's all about the depth of information you can get rather than the breadth. Um, and on that kind of note, I think with AI in general, you've got quite a lot of companies like me. Um, I'm obviously going to be biased and say we're the best, but um, you've got a lot of computer vision companies working on incredibly specific solutions. Um, and I think there's going to be a huge kind of merging of the AI market in the years to come around, right, Google's focused on this broad world, then they're going to start bringing in bits and bobs from these kind of sectors. So uh, yeah, that's the kind of businessy slash technical argument to, to why we're different. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, a question more about careers. I think you made reference to, to your time of graduation. Do you, do you think given the situation we're now in, not having a first class degree Will, will affect your job prospects and what advice would you would you offer? Um, so I say this, so I, I had a first. I don't think anyone in my uh, in my job interviews asked me what degree classification I got. Not to put down anyone who's got a first, but if you walked away with a 2-1 or a 2-2, two -two, it is really, really not the end of the world. You walked away with a Bristol engineering degree, that's worth far more. So um, I'd say don't be hung up on the final grade that you got. Um, employers will look for life skills as well as the academic skills and it's a kind of package that they're looking for at the moment. I think that um, when employers are hiring people fresh out of university, they're looking for someone who's resourceful, who will be able to learn off their own back and will quickly integrate into a business. And they're the skills you can really demonstrate now. And to be honest, graduating when you are, um, you've got a very um, easy case to make, Cambridge, I've said it, if you graduate in 2020, you are hardcore. And I think that's something that um, employers will see throughout your career and that everyone will remember this time. So um, I'd say don't be too hung up on the classification. Um, it's, yeah, it, graduating from hard courses alone, um, employers know the value of that. Thank you. So again, you may have touched on this, but, but just to perhaps expand a little further looking back on your career so far and i accept you're you're not fully through your career is there anything you would do differently uh definitely so many things um i would have taken the leap of faith earlier um so two and a half years to start a company um i was very lucky that no one else did it in that time like it's obviously a hard field of technology but uh it was very lucky we still had that first mover advantage um, I even had support from Set Squared, um, who were kind of phoning me once every three months going, are you going to do it yet? So uh, I think listen to um, what people are saying when you're graduating and what they think you should be doing. Uh, it's interesting. I'll always remember, um, it might happen to you at your graduation ceremony, but one of my lecturers said, you've become your project manager. Like, that, that's not very you. And I, I should have listened to that voice um, a bit sooner on. Um, so thank you. Thanks on the call. Um, I remember that very clearly. 
Um, I think other things I wish I had have done differently. Um, that's a great question. I, it took me a while to realize the power of Bristol, which sounds weird. And I know it sounds biased being on this call, but I didn't reach back out to university for a good four or five years. Um, Cause I kind of felt like I had to reach back out when I'd done something and when I proved myself, which is bizarre. That literally just came from myself rather than anything that had been said to me. And then as soon as I got back in touch, I was introduced to students who had jobs. I was introduced to lecturers who were working on specific fields in computer vision who helped me find great hires. And just by reaching back out to the university, I realized the power that that network has. Um, and I really regret not doing that sooner. And um, when I was kind of floundering around a bit, working out, do I start the company? Do I not? What do I do with my career? And um, I think that would have been really helpful. So yeah, it's been really rewarding me reaching back out. It's been useful for the business. Um, and now I kind of mentor startups. I work with the um, enterprise fund. I work with the computer science department well as well. And I think that's just been really kind of fulfilling for me to, to stay involved and, and keep on going there. Brilliant, thank you. So you've achieved a lot early in your career. What, what's the next step? I have no idea. Um, and to be honest, that's something I'm learning to embrace. And I think it's actually really fun. So I'm a bit envious of everyone today. Um, so as a business, um, this year is all about scale. So we've got the tech. Um, we've been developing it over 10 years now, which is a long time. Um, so we're going to carry on developing it. So um, looking at other markets. Um, if anyone from Creed Science is on the call, you'll know my pain over occlusion and rotation of areas. There are two technical challenges. Um, but the business challenge is how do we scale this and get it into as many people's hands as possible. Um, so we've got partnerships with Oracle and Microsoft and beginning to kind of really scale the business. So uh, that's that's what's next for me. Um, and then personally, um, I'm trying to do a lot more work on kind of mental health and, and that side of things for, for students um, and also for startup founders as well. Um, it's a very tough career path. It's it's quite a lonely journey. Um, so that's something I'm kind of personally working on as well is uh, that kind of mental wellness when you're pushing the boundaries and, and how you can better support people there. So that's my, my kind of personal motivation. That, that leads me very nicely into my last question, which is how do you maintain a healthy work-life balance? Uh, um, I'm probably not the healthiest work-life balance person, but I love my work, so I'm, I'm lucky there. So one thing I've done is not be hung up on the number of hours I'm working and those divides. So kind of got used to living a life where it, it blends a bit, but it works for me. And um, the other one purely practical is I do drumming. Um, so I've always played instruments. I'm actually doing this talk here from a piano, the wonderful of a uh, upside of everyone being locked down. Um, but yeah, I've taken up the drums. So I hit things regularly every week. Um, I play softball. I see my friends. So uh, yeah, all of those good things. Uh, I think that it was mentioned is uh, the power of connecting with your friends when I, when times are tough. Um, you, you can't underestimate that. So uh, yeah, that, that's my release. Thank you very much, Jenny. I really appreciate your insight and I hope the audience have as well. So we move on uh, towards to the end of our celebration event uh, and it's time to enjoy some student performances. Uh, first up we have the Bristol University Singers. Hello Bristol Class of 2020. My name is Eleanor Cooper and I am Musical Director of Bristol University Singers, the university's top auditioned choral ensemble. I'm very proud to present a performance recorded by Bristol University singers during lockdown. We're saying goodbye to a large number of final year students from across all faculties this year and wish them and all of you the very best. Here is Underneath the Stars by Kate Rusby, arranged here by Jim Clements.
I'm sure they'd like me if they only met me. They come and go of their own So we will shortly finish the event with one final performance from our Symphonia Society and then your messages will be displayed. The chat will remain open until 11.15 when the event will close. After the performance there will also be a short poll for you to complete, along with some important links to the Careers Service, whom remain here to help you, and also the Alumni Association of which you now become a part. It just remains for me to say a big thank you for joining us today. We sincerely hope it will not be long until we can welcome you back in person to the university for your formal graduation ceremonies. Thank you to all our guest speakers and on behalf of everyone at the university, including all the faculty staff, it has been such a pleasure to have been on this journey with you. I do hope that we have helped give you the skills and the knowledge you need to make a real impact in your chosen field. We are sure you'll go on to do great things and are extremely proud of you all, especially under the circumstances of this year. From all of us at the University of Bristol, it is not goodbye, it is a see you later. So my name is Enyok Para. I'm a final year law student at the University of Bristol and I also conduct the Bristol University Symphonia Symphony Orchestra. Symphonia is the university's orchestral society consisting of two orchestras, our audition Symphony Orchestra and our unaudition Philharmonic Orchestra. What you're about to hear is a socially distanced virtual performance put together by our members during the lockdown, a handful of which are final year students. So we hope you enjoy, see you soon.
shot will do a shot at the end and we just go. Thank you.